Good day everyone. We are back again uh, with another great speaker to give you more information about diabetes. Uh, it gives me a great pleasure to introduce our speaker to you today, Dr. Fiza Rafiq. She is a family practitioner and also she is the president of MDI. And this whole series uh, that we are doing today is a collaboration of MDI and DWC. So first of all, Dr. Fiza, thank you very much for providing all of us a platform to talk to the public and to increase the awareness on the World Diabetes Day in the month of November. And uh, we welcome you on board here for our interviews. And my first question uh, to you will be, before anything, is how would you define diabetes? Because people have got very vague concept. They go into herbal medicines, they go and they try to do everything which is not scientific. So how would you tell them what is diabetes? Well, thank you so much, Dr. Fozia, for giving me an opportunity to talk about this chronic health disease that is called diabetes. As all of you might have known one person in your life at least who has diabetes. What diabetes is, is um, inability of the body to use a hormone in your body that is produced by pancreas insulin. Whether your body is producing insulin or it is not producing insulin, there are two, two kinds of diabetes. So in diabetes, your blood sugar levels are high in the blood. Maybe you're not producing enough insulin, or maybe insulin is produced, but your body cannot use that insulin, resulting in raised levels of blood sugars, and also the blue, uh, sugar is released in your urine as well. So this is a condition that is called diabetes. What Dr. Fiza said is type 2 diabetes could be insulin deficiency or insulin resistance. Um, Dr. Fiza, what do you think is the prevalence? Um, what is the prevalence of type 2 diabetes in Canada? The health uh, statistics in diabetes, they are telling us that there are about 7.3% Canadians are mm -hmm. affected by diabetes, uh, leading to about 2.3 million people in total that have diabetes and they're diagnosed people with diabetes. Uh, so who are pre-diabetics, we are not sure. We, we, we don't know the number we of those know. people. There are so many potential diabetics in this community. Yeah, one of the reasons why MDI, um, in collaboration with DWC, is doing these health uh, talks is to make you aware of the signs and symptoms, even if you are not diabetic, but your family history is positive of diabetes. I would like to ask you, Dr. Fiza, that for the public, what signs and symptoms they should look out for if they really want to know whether they are pre-diabetic or not? There are different risk factors uh, that can lead to diabetes. So um, we as primary uh, health providers, we not only treat diabetes, and we, we can also help people to screen them for diabetes. So what screening for diabetes is that we need to work on, and this is my message to this community as well, uh, you necessarily don't need to have any symptoms of diabetes. You can be at risk. You can be at risk of diabetes. So what are the risk factors for diabetes? It could be your age, it could be your gender, it could be uh, your family history, it could be your lifestyle if you're overweight, if you're physically inactive, you're more, more at risk of having diabetes. Considering our woman population, if they have history of gestational diabetes or they have given birth to a big baby that is called macrosomic baby, or if they have history of polycystic ovarian disease, they are more at risk of having diabetes. So these are the people, they should come and see their family doctor to get screened and have a blood test done for diabetes. Thank you so much, because usually what people think is that having increased thirst and going to the washroom a lot, um, that these are the common um, signs and they uh, think that only this is diabetes whereas the cramps in the legs, the blurring of the eye, the mood irritability, all these when together they can also be the uh, uncommon signs of diabetes which we should look out especially the family members. So being a family physician, um, how do you assess uh, when the patient comes to your clinic, what would you uh, focus more on when you're dealing with a new diabetic? It's a, it's a great question actually. Um, working in Canada, we are working with a diverse population. People are coming from Africa, from Southeast Asia, from, um, uh, from Arab communities, from Philippines, um, from all over the world. So there are different ethnic groups who are more at risk of having diabetes. So when patients come to us we, uh, for a meet and greet session, so we take a 
uh, detailed history from them. That history includes, first of all, we know their age. Age more than 40 is more at risk of having diabetes. If male gender is more at risk of having diabetes. Then we uh, ask them about their family history. If they have a family history, a uh, first degree relative who has diabetes, they are more at risk of diabetes. And uh, their lifestyle, if they're physically inactive um, and uh, they're overweight, then we definitely need to screen them and uh, do a blood test on them and ask them about the sign and symptoms of diabetes. That could be uh, feeling more hungry, it could be fatigue, feeling more tired than usual, loss of weight uh, in case of type 1 diabetes or feeling more thirsty. These are the symptoms that we need to explore and ask. I have noticed you have got a very good education system in your clinic and uh, that speaks uh, a lot about the care that a diabetic person gets. So um, how would you, um, how would you uh, impress the public by telling them or by giving them an idea what diabetes education means? Because sometimes uh, when they are, uh, um, they are asked to go and see a diabetes educator, they say, okay, no, we have got the medicines, Why, what is the need of going to a diabetes educator? As we uh, mentioned already, diabetes is a chronic disease. It is going to stay with you for years and years. So you need to learn how to deal with it and how to manage it. It's not only treating on your only your blood sugars, but it affects your mental health as well. And it's the whole um, system that needs to be involved, including your family members. I think they should be educated about diabetes as well. Coming to see your family doctor is going to expose you to too many resources available in our community that can help you educate, help you uh, make aware what resources are available in this community. You are so lucky to be in Canada. Like we family doctors, we are attached to primary care networks here. And primary care networks are doing a great job of providing dietitian services, those are all free. Uh, they, they are providing with the pharmac pharmacists who are specialized in diabetes. So when you come to see a family doctor, you not only get tested and diagnosed, but we attach you with, with a social worker or a, or a psychologist or with a, di or a dietitian, chronic disease man management nurses or with, a, or with a pharmacist. So the whole system gets involved to help you how, how to deal with this chronic health disease and not to leave you alone to deal with your problems in this community. That's wonderful because as uh, we all know chronic diseases needs a team uh, work and here in Canada that team is there to serve all the diabetic uh, community. You just need to understand and I'm sure with today's session you will have a clear idea of how lucky we have to have a good health system that is promoting everything and giving us all the backup support that we need. It's just to ask and to take that step that is important. Um, Dr. Fiza, thank you so much. Uh, what public uh, message would you like to give? So my message is to all the viewers, the chances are if you are not a diabetic, you will see a diabetic around you. So if you have any sign or symptoms of diabetes, as we mentioned, or you think you are at risk of having diabetes, please don't hesitate. See your family doctor today or as soon as possible. Get screened, get tested. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Fizz.